Seven years ago, I met a man. It wasn't love at first sight, but once we got started talking, I realized there was actually a lot to like about this guy. He seemed to feel the same way about me, so we started dating. And before you know it, five years have zoomed by like nothing, and we are in love. Now, I'm not talking the sort of, you know, woo, this will be fun while it lasts, flash in the pan type of love. I'm talking, we were happy to sit together in the same room and just quietly read books, happy that we were breathing the same air. That kind of love. My mom loved him too, by the way, <laughs> which is really nice. <laughs> there was one little rub, though, that kept everything from being totally perfect, and that's that he really preferred to hang out at my place more than at his. And it took me a while to find out exactly why that was, but finally he admitted that it was because he was hiding some undocumented people at his place. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't want to get me involved in this. And this might sound, this might sound a little far-fetched, but I should mention that he was from a country where a lot of undocumented people do come through, so it wasn't actually that far-fetched when you know it in context. And it did bother me though. I'm like, really? You waited until now to tell me this? <laughs> Didn't you think in the interest of disclosure you should have coughed it up? And I took a little time to decide if I still wanted to be with somebody that was keeping secrets from me like that. But you know, we'd been together for long enough and I have some really big trust issues, but I had not only fallen in love with him, I had fallen in trust. And I decided that that was worth something and that because I knew if he was involved with this, there weren't going to be drugs, there wasn't going to be trafficking, anything like that. It was just one human being helping out some other human beings who were in a really tough spot. I said, okay, I'm going to take a big chance on you, buddy. And everything goes pretty smoothly again. You know, he's upfront, he's honest, it's great, still trust him. Until one day I fall down the very strange rabbit hole that is comments on an online Alaska Dispatch News article. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange place to be, but I, I wonder in there when I should be working instead. And the article is about a car accident, and one of the commenters had actually gone to the trouble of looking up the driver in the car accident on court view, and then he came back to comment, he's like, no, that guy should not have been allowed to drive because he has all these terrible convictions. All right, so that makes me curious. So I successfully evade a few more minutes of work by going into court view myself. You know, it's the public record system. Anybody can look up anybody. And I look up this guy and sure enough, he's in there and it's like, whoa, that's that some pretty nasty stuff. Maybe he shouldn't have been driving. But as long as I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, you see where this is going. So. The love of my life, let's call him Freddy, just to give him a name. And I had actually looked Freddy up before when it was obvious that we were first getting serious. You know, it's not stalking if you're just checking to make sure that he wasn't accused of being a stalker. <laughs> and he hadn't been. <laughs> there were no crimes, just some little speeding tickets, things like that. It's like, okay, I can deal with that. But I'm in there, I'm like, well, maybe he's got new tickets or something. I should check it out and I can tease him afterward. And I make a typo, I get one letter wrong. So instead of the speeding tickets that I was expecting, up pops this case that's totally different. It, almost the same name, very common name, exactly the same birth date. And I look at it and I'm pretty sure part of me was just like, nope, don't wanna see that. So I go back to work, I'm like, whoa, biggest coincidence in the world, who knew? And a little while later, he goes out of town to visit family, and I take him to the airport and, you know, hug, hug, kiss, kiss. Okay, bye, sweetheart, have fun. And I'm having a great time having a few days to myself, but that thing I saw in court view just kind of keeps nibbling at the back of my mind. So I decide, all right, the only way I'm going to put this to rest is if I go down to the courthouse, and again, public records, not stalker at all, <laughs> I'm going to pull that case, I'm going to see that it really is a crazy coincidence, it doesn't have anything at all to do with him, and then it'll be great, and he's coming back the next day, so I can just meet him with a big hug and everything will be fine. So I go down to the domestic violence counter in the courthouse, and I say to the woman there, I couldn't believe that I found myself saying this, but it was okay because everything was going to be fine as, as soon as I saw that it wasn't him. 
I said, I think my boyfriend might be lying to me, and I'm just here to look at the case so I can see that he's not. She doesn't even bat an eye, and I realize that this is not the first time that she has heard this. <laughs> Sorry. She just, she goes and she gets the folder, and she brings it back, and I open it up, and I start turning pages. And pretty soon, I am embroiled in this real-life soap opera of a man and a woman, and they're married, and they have kids, and the woman has been hitting one of the kids, and the man takes out a restraining order against her on behalf of the kid. And it's a big hot mess, but it's a handwritten hot mess. Somebody wrote this out all by hand, and I can see that it is not Freddie's handwriting. So I'm like, wow, that really was a coincidence. Who knew? I am so off the hook. But by this point, I'm also kind of invested in these people in the paper. <laughs> and I want to know what happens. So I keep turning the pages and reading, but I haven't said anything to the clerk yet because I don't want her to think that I am some kind of creep that just reads other people's restraining orders for fun. <laughs> and so I'm getting to the end, and they're actually working things out, and I'm kind of happy for these people that I don't know at all. You know, she got counseling. It's all going to be OK. And then at the very last page, I see it. It's his signature. Somebody else had written down the story, and then Freddie had signed it. It's a very unmistakable signature. There's no way I could be wrong. And I just looked up at the woman. I said, it is him. <clears throat> I don't know how I got home. Obviously, I did. At some point, I managed to get in my car and drive myself home. And I just remember laying there in bed thinking, what do you do? when you took a chance on somebody, when you went all in, and you find out that not only was he lying to you, but he was actively duping you the entire time, making you think he was somebody he wasn't. There's no script for that. But the next day, he was coming in from the airport, and I had his car at my place, so there was no way we were going to miss each other. Well, the next day, I get out of bed, I go to the airport, and when his plane comes in, I'm standing there waiting. I give him a great big hug because I know it's the last one that we're ever going to have. I asked him how his trip went, and I listened to his story as we walked down to my car in the parking garage. And when he gets in, there's a copy of the papers from the court sitting on his chair. And he picks it up, and he looks at it, and he just stares. And I said, is there anything you want to tell me? He said, I'm still hoping this could be saved somehow. And he finally says, yeah, OK. I'm married, I have two kids. There's another long pause. I mean, what do you say to that? I, I had nothing. And then he says, just take me back to my car and I'll vanish from your life forever. You'll never see me again. It's the wrong thing to say to somebody that you have been actively duping for five years. So I said, no, we're not gonna do that. You know what we did instead? We went to his wife's house. <laughs> because he had been passing off his buddy's house as his own all this time, but I had the address from the paperwork. I knew where they really lived. So I took him there. I kicked his car out on the porch at one in the morning with his little suitcase, and I drove off. Thanks. <laughs>